two years ago, um, I had this chance to stand in the Oval Office as the President signed the Genetic Information Non-Discrimination Act. This will basically, and it does now, make illegal the use of your genetic information in uh, health insurance decisions and in the workplace, uh, which were the major concerns that people had. Uh, so that can no longer be done. That's a criminal act. But people should be aware that's not the only kind of discrimination that could be out there. It doesn't say anything about life insurance. It doesn't say anything about long-term care or disability. Uh, so those are still instances where your information could, if it falls into the hands of an insurance company, uh, be used uh, to set a particularly high premium if you're at high risk or even exclude you altogether. And at the moment, there's no legal prohibition against that. And people should think about that before they learn about their own DNA in ways that they might later wish had remained uh, out of sight. Are there requirements currently to, to declare that information at the time you're buying insurance? <laughs> well, I'm interested because George mentioned something, uh, or, or maybe, I'm sorry, it was Bob mentioned something about your Alzheimer's study uh, who, who went out and actually bought more insurance. Yeah. Uh, I don't know what the uh, circumstances are in every policy, but most of the time uh, when you apply for a policy, you say something to the effect that I have disclosed all relevant information. So how have they But you made that? the suggestion, Francis, that <laughs> they could uh, buy the policy and honestly saying they don't know anything about it and then go find out about it and then drop the policy if they, if don't, they don't need, need it. it. We put it into our... This is not a recommendation, <laughs> folks. You've heard it here. <laughs> we put it into our... I know you're going to bring that up. <laughs> Full disclosure. Yeah, right. We put it into our consent form, Francis, that, uh, that people had to realize the risk that if they learned information like their APOE, they might get asked about it when they were in the future buying policies. So mm -hmm. some of them actually bought it before they entered the study. But according to what they said, what they told us, they actually, we had a five times the number of people reporting that they purchased long-term care insurance if they were E4 positive than if they were E4 negative in the year after they learned their results. Now, when I talked about this in front of the International Meeting of Long-Term Care Insure Underwriters in Cleveland, Ohio, um, you, Rio would have been nicer, but <laughs> <laughs> these little guys in bow ties and thick, thick glasses, uh, meek as they are, underwriters, virtually stormed the stage. They said, you're going to put us out of business. You're going to take our, our business away. And I said, I, I'm, not, I'm not going to, because they were so incensed that the people could have inside information. And you do realize that a basic principle is insurance, is that you can't have information beyond what the insurance company does or you can game the system. So, yeah, it's called adverse selection. Exactly. So it's, it's, it's a concern to the insurance company. I wouldn't be surprised if pretty soon long-term care insurance carriers start asking much more pointed questions. Mm -hmm.